back with another Luger holster. Imagine that. It seems like I get a lot of these. I know. And actually, I do quite a few of them. But the last one, I tried to show one, a few more details on one aspect of a repair, which was the strap, the closure strap on it. So this one is another repair, but this one is more of a specific repair. And it's going to be dealing with the thread and what I do, the steps I do to prepare the thread to go and make this repair. Because this one's got, the stitching is gone on the flap. Well, it's not gone. It's there. It's just uh, not usable. <laughs> and what I go, the steps I go through to make this kind of a repair. It's a fairly simple repair. It just takes time because we have to prep that thread. Um, this holster is a 1939 holster. Um, it also has a name kind of marked into it. Looks like it says McPhee. M-C-F-E-E. -E. I don't know. I always like seeing that kind of stuff because it's always part of the history of the holster. And I don't get any history with them. But it's kind of neat anyway. Um, so there is that. It looks like at some point it might have got wet back here and got some water damage. But the stitching is all in pretty good shape except on that flap. And if we look at it, it's not even really discolored much. So really, I just kind of got to shade it a little bit. I don't have to do a lot with it. So, I'm going to put you down on the bench here. Um, I do have to pick all the old stitching out. i got to take the flap completely off because, I mean, that's a lot of stitching that's gone there. Sometimes if it's only a few stitches, I might leave it attached and just replace those few stitches. So to keep some of that thread color and that authenticity there. Actually, if it's only three or four stitches that are gone, I might tie it off, figure out how to tie it off, and leave it. And just leave a few stitches out. Um, as long as it's not loose on the end. This one is loose on the end, obviously. So I'm going to put you down on the bench, show you what I do to, you know, get the rest of that out. This holster is in extremely good condition for being a 1939 holster. And uh, we'll get on with the video. I just want to start with a sharp blade. The sharp blade is going to cut through the thread the best. There's a few here that I need to cut through. And believe it or not, this linen thread is pretty tough stuff. There's two rows of stitching here, so I am cutting through two rows. I'm going inside and I'm pushing down on this piece here because this piece is going to push down and kind of lifting up on the flap in the cover part. There we go, that part's done. Now we're done with that tool. This pick is the best I've found for picking out threads. So on the flap here we don't have much to pick out. Um, you don't want to pick any more from the side with the finish on it. You don't want to pick any of those from this side if you don't have to. Usually there's something left on the back you can pull it through. The ones you can't pull through you can push through from the other side. I hope. Now I push that one up so it's got a loop under it so I can get a hold of it. And I'll just go along and pull them out like that.
Hmm. That one's got really buried in there. If you do have to pick it from the side with your finish, be really careful. You can see where the threads are sticking out. Let's see if I can get a little better light from that side. And I'm just going to go kind of poke through here and try to keep my hands out of the way. And sometimes they don't poke through but they did push through enough that I can now just kind of get under them without risking damaging the finish on the holster and it's just a process that takes time one of those things And it's kind of funny because sometimes it doesn't even look like it's pushing through. But in fact it is. At least enough so that you can grab it. Sometimes I'll just lay the tool, this thing up alongside it. Gives me something to push against. And in no time, you have them all out. They're not all out yet, but in no time at all, you'll have them all out. And you'll be there. When you get done, sometimes just rubbing along the top here with a rag, kind of like this, won't hurt the leather, but it'll work some of those out that are still stuck down in the in the little in the grooves here because when you stitch it the thread kind of makes a groove in there after all the years and and such and you can just kind of rub it with a rag and it'll loosen it up a little bit more and you'll be able to pull them out of there and it just takes time When I'm not doing this for the camera, it goes much faster. I'll just push some of that through from the other side. You do want to get everything out of there because having thread in there can really screw up your stitching. I just about got all that out of there. Once I've got all of these cleaned out, I'll take just a little bit of Connolly Hide Care and just use it as a cleaner to clean all that out. Get Because there's dirt under the thread. And I want to get the dirt out of there while I've got the opportunity to do it. Dirt will become abrasive against the thread and it will ruin the thread and it will also dig into the leather. So we want to make sure we get all the dirt out of there. This side too, there's dirt in here. Because what happens is the dirt gets caught between the flap in this layer so we're going to clean all that up make sure there's no dirt left in there and uh, I'll be back when I get to cleaning get all these threads poked out this part's going to take a little while but we'll get her done as I'm looking at this one of the things I want to always make a note of is where 
they knotted off the thread. And it's knotted down here. And how they knotted it. So the knot is one side to the other. Which is kind of interesting. Because on this end, they came down and did it in one length of thread all the way. Normally I see these are done in two lengths of thread. They'll go with one row and then a second row. This one appears to have been done in two rows. So that'll be interesting for me to duplicate that. I'm going to break down a few notes here so that uh, I know that I need to do that. <laughs> I try to always duplicate that, but that's always something that I look for. If I don't have any evidence of that, then I just do it the way that I've always seen them. I've never seen, I haven't done a 1939 holster, at least with these markings on it. I've done 39s with other markings, but I haven't had, had these markings yet. I don't speak German. I'll have to do a little research on those markings and see a little more about it. But, I'm going to make a few notes and uh, snap a couple more pictures of how that stitching is so that I can duplicate it. Here's my pile of picked out threads from this side. I didn't ever, I think I showed this in one video, I made a little tool and all that really is is a broken needle from my Singer 3115 a leather needle and I use that to just uh, it pokes a diamond hole in leather and I just use it to poke through the holes and it pushes the thread through if there's little pieces that I can't get out it works pretty good it's a pretty slick little unit if I do say so myself so there's my pile of thread I'll just shove that off in the garbage because it doesn't do anybody any good um, Just need a little bit of the Connolly hide care. We'll just kind of put that, rub that in, and I'm kind of using it more of a cleaner instead of a moisturizer at this point. But I am going to go because this piece folds. I'm going to go over the fold too because I don't know. Just seems like the thing to do. I don't want to moisturize the whole holster. A lot of collectors have their thing that they use. Um, and collectors can be, some of them can be pretty picky. But I like to put something on here just because A, I get the dirt out of there. And it's a spot that's really hard to get to. I mean, you can't get to this part when you're. Uh, when it's together. This part is really hard to get to and it can get missed. Don't like that. It's all nice and clean. I'll have to poke through the holes and get the hide care out of the holes, but no big deal. Not a problem at all. But that's going to be a little moisturizing in there. It'll be nice and I'll be a little, be able to rest a little easier on that. So we'll just kind of go along and do the same on the top here. This is beeswax and this is 100% beeswax. There's no paraffin or nothing added to it. A friend of mine gave this to me, came straight out of a beehive, and it's still shaped like the bottom of a five gallon bucket. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. Um, I cut off three pieces, and I'm going to take a little bit of this end, and I'm just going to run it through some beeswax here, real quick. 
this end I do a lot of black on. I'm not going to run it through that end. So I got some beeswax on there first. And I've got my light brown Feebings Pro Dye. And this is a dauber that I usually use. It's still a little bit damp, but not very. And I'm going over the top of that dye, or that beeswax. In hopes that it's now a little too dark, but can I now go over it with the rag and take some of that off and get a color that's fairly close. And I think that just might do the trick. Some of the color, of course, will come off as we stitch. So I think that's probably the ticket right there. I can go to the other end. I cut these, uh, I went six times my length that I need here. Take this one, and we'll just kind of run it through here. Without the beeswax. Gonna give it the same treatment. And that is a little bit too dark, I think. What happens if we run it through our beeswax? We do have to wax the thread regardless, so there is that to consider. Yeah, that came out too dark. So I think the answer is going to be beeswax first, and then some dye. And I think that will give us a closer color match. Might go with a little extra dye on there since some of it's going to come off. But uh, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape this way. Here's one of those things that I like to do ahead of time, and that's I'll prepare both of my threads. I get dye on my fingers running that through there. I'll prepare both of them, get needles on them, but that's not going to fit through a needle, the eye of a needle. So I'll take a hammer and with the wax on there you can flatten it out a little bit. So it's just flattened out and I will take and Cut it at an angle. Hope you can see that. And I'll do this with my braided threads too. And just kind of pinch it between my fingers for a few seconds. The heat from your fingers will kind of help that wax to, I don't know, seems to do it. I don't know what it does. It just helps. And then that eye is pretty tiny. I'm about half blind, so. Oh, look, I just did three of them. The last one's going to be the one that's going to fight me. But when you get that angle on there, it just makes it a little easier to thread through the eye of the needle. Because this linen thread kind of takes up the entire eye. And just kind of pull a few inches through so that you've got it. And then your needle is threaded. When you go to reassemble, your parts are going to tell you how everything lined up. Some of these will have an extra hole off the edge of the flap, or top, cover, whatever you want to call it, that went beyond the end of this. So there was a, a binding stitch over it. Some of them don't. So you got to kind of line everything up a little bit and see how it lines up. So I'll take a needle and I'll go through whichever hole is the last hole and you can see it on the front here. So I'm going to take the farthest inside to the inside on here. And I'm going to try to line that up right where they were and see if that lines up with the 
mark that I have on the inside here which I think it did but see you can line it all up this is a hard part because there's no glue holding everything together <laughs> and it makes it a little more difficult so I th think that's how it lined up and the reason I think they did that X at the end here is because this stitch in is going to grab and then you can go over here and come back because the very edge here there's nothing really there kind of this needle kind of goes through there I did not make the exit back here um, as I got to looking at the leather itself those two holes on the very end there's just not enough material there I didn't want to be messing with it trying to make that X um, so instead I did a good binding stitch over there with that very last hole which I don't think really had enough integrity the top one is actually kind of ripped through the leather and I didn't want to deal with that so I'm just using that as a binding stitch across the end and just doing a regular saddle stitch uh, I would have had to do a lock stitch in order to do that X which is fine I don't have a problem doing that but at the same time it's kind of a pain um, just in that it's a pain <laughs> you wind up having to put your needle through and back through the same hole and uh, I'll show that in another video altogether because it it's a lot of work and this is actually going to give it a little more integrity and a little more it'll be a nice solid stitch This will kind of make you realize that glue can be your friend. And I probably could have glued it, but you can never really hide the fact that a repair was made. But you don't want to make it glaringly obvious it's obvious enough to you know most collectors will know because you never get a perfect match on your thread you never get a perfect match on your dye colors you just make it so that you know it looks good call it 20 foot <laughs> nah I, I can usually get things to match up pretty good, look pretty nice. Once I'm done with this and uh, all my treatment is done, it should look pretty good. Right now the thread looks pretty rough on here and that's okay because it is what it is. So the color is not as perfect as I'd like because we're trying to get this to be more of a match to this color and it's pretty close I think but once we're done and get it all buffed out and stuff you'll see that it'll it'll actually look pretty good I always keep my needle pulling pliers handy some of these holes can get kinda kinda tough trying to keep the thread laying in the grooves that are already there from the previous thread and the linen thread you can't pull this as tight as you would like uh, the regular uh, nylon threads that I use just don't take it it just doesn't take it as I look at the 
the angle of the belt holes you can see how if it was worn on the right side the holster I'm exaggerating a little bit the holster would have been angled backward whereas if you wore it on the left side it would be angled forward so that when you pulled the strap to lift the gun out you could grab it right handed there's some of those neat little interesting things that you learn along the way and that's some of the some of what I like about doing this kind of work I get to learn a little more about the history and a lot of times it comes from customers that particular tidbit came from a customer that had been collecting these Lugers for <laughs> a lot of years he was uh, that particular customer I think was in his 80s if I remember right I've got both rows stitched I forgot to turn the camera on when I tied it off sorry about that my bad um, so I'm gonna go ahead and tap down that second row this top row here um, a hammer like this comes in pretty handy um, some of my other ones are too short to make that but this one can come right in here just fold that flap up where this type of a hammer will come in handy uh, something like this kind of a cobbler's hammer will work pretty well too either one so let's take it down and you can see it, the uh, color match isn't perfect yet because we wanted to match this but we're pretty close we're pretty close we'll get some uh, buffing done on there and that should get us a little closer Down on this end, uh, on this first row here that I did, the leather back here was really compromised. There was the last two or three holes were blown out the back. So what I did is I just stitched that in as best I could. And we're relying on this top holes, these top ones, to hold that all together the best. But that one was blown out on the end, so I'm relying. These had these were with a binding stitch on the end so that binding stitch is kind of what's holding everything really good to, over there I mean everything is held together real well I'm not worried about it at all and on this end rather than getting that X in there that we would have had to do the um, uh, lock stitch for I opted to go with a uh, regular saddle stitch and just get a good solid binding stitch over that because of that those end holes were blown out on the main body part so everything is stitched together real well it's a good solid repair I'm not even not worried about it in the least well I think it came out okay it lightened up a little bit not a lot though I wish it would have done a little more but it's okay it's really really hard to get thread to match perfect um, no matter what you're looking at and when you look at the thread on the tool pouch and the thread that I put in we're not too far off 
I think we're pretty good. Um, that being said, that's another holster in the books. Get some pictures sent off to my customer, see what he thinks. And uh, that's going to be it for this Luger holster, this 1939 Luger holster, reattaching the top. It is a good solid repair. Um, and there ain't much more you can say about it. We do the best we can with the repairs because we don't want to change too much about the holster. Uh, we want to keep them as original as possible. Repairs are repairs. You can't hide them. They're going to be there. But you do as much as you can to make them as inconspicuous as possible. And I think we've achieved that. Anyway, all that being said, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of my videos on repair work or what have you, um, I've got a playlist of holster repair. So you're welcome to watch that. I'll link that somewhere around here. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit that like button. It helps the channel out. helps me out. And I appreciate it. Drop a comment down below. I always look at the comments and I answer any questions. Take any suggestions. And, uh, you know, with that being said, y'all stay safe. God bless. And I'll catch you in the next video.